Hi, this is David McCann for WebTNG. In this video, I'm looking at a free plugin called WP Control. The name Control is a mashup of Cron and Control. WP Cron is the way to schedule events to happen on your WordPress website, and the plugin WP Control provides a management interface for those Cron events. So in this video, I'm going to look at what WP Cron is and how you can use the free plugin WP Control to manage them. This video is sponsored by Breakdance, the modern visual website builder for WordPress. It's easy for beginners to learn and powerful enough for the most advanced professionals. Breakdance is loaded with features, including a premium pre-made template library, a robust form builder, a versatile pop-up builder, and seamless WooCommerce integration. Whether you're just starting your WordPress journey or you're a seasoned pro looking for a better builder for your agency, now is the perfect time to build better websites with Breakdance. Try it today and experience the Breakdance difference. WP Control is a free plugin in the WordPress plugin directory. It's created by John Blackborn, who's the author of the well respected Query Monitor plugin. You can see that WP Control is regularly updated. It's got more than 200,000 active installs. It's got a good number of five star reviews and the developer is active in the support forum. There's a website for WP Control. It's a 100% free plugin, so what this website is is really documentation for the plugin. There's pretty much all the information you would need right here on this website. So as you're using the plugin, if you have questions, then it's easy to jump over here and find the answer. This plugin is developed on GitHub, and even though this plugin's been around for a while, you see that it's still being actively developed. Now, let's talk a little bit about what WP Cron is. Cron, the word is from Greek Latin meaning time, and so Cron events are scheduled events. Linux and Unix, Windows, the servers have a job scheduler as part of their operating system. Even desktop and laptop computers have a scheduler built in. Windows, Mac have a schedule built in, and that's how they know, for example, when to check for updates. So it's pretty common for computer systems to have a scheduler so that you can clean up, you can check for updates. In the case of WordPress, you can validate a software license and so on. We'll see some of these jobs in just a minute. But a difference between the event schedulers that you have with a computer and ones that you have with WordPress is that a computer, assuming that it's on, the scheduler is running and checking periodically all the time. Whereas with WordPress, the software only runs when there's a page load, typically when a visitor comes to the website. This difference between the way a computer has an event scheduler and WordPress does is important for a couple of reasons. Some websites, if they're important or for some reason they don't get a lot of traffic, some people will go to their hosting control panel or their VPS control panel. And there's often a utility there where you can schedule WordPress cron jobs to run using the computer's event scheduler instead of the WordPress cron event scheduler. Okay, so it's a little more consistent. It might be a little bit more performant. And there's a tag you can put in to your WP config file to turn off the WordPress cron, and you can replace the 
you know, migrate the WordPress cron events over to the server. That's not something we're going to do here. That's more advanced type of thing, but something to have in the back of your mind in case one day it's something you need. Now, you may have built a WordPress website a while ago. You may be taking care of WordPress websites and maybe never even realized that there was such a thing as WP Cron. I'm mentioning that because most of the time, WP Cron is just going to run the way it's supposed to behind the scenes, and it's not something you really need to worry about. However, if you've been installing and uninstalling a lot of plugins, those plugins might register a cron job, and so there might be an orphan there, and that could potentially slow down your site, or maybe there's a job that's running and it's creating a PHP error. So there are times when you might want to check the WP cron as part of maintenance or troubleshooting, and that's when this plugin is really helpful. So you may be wondering, where do these mysterious WP cron events come from? A number of them are added by WordPress core itself. And I believe, in my experience, if you remove a core WordPress cron event, WordPress will add it back automatically. But other cron events are added by plugins and themes, I think, when you activate them. Now, the WP cron events are stored in the options table. Okay, it's a single row in the options table. We're going to be looking in just a minute at a test website. This is the record from the website we're going to be looking at of the cron option here. It's the options table, and this is the cron option. You see all of the jobs are listed here in this one row, and it's an auto load option, which means when a visitor comes to the website and the life cycle of a page request is initiated, WordPress loads the options that are auto load, that have this auto load yes into memory. So the schedule is there. And one of the things that happens in that lifecycle event is that cron jobs that are pending are kicked off and the schedules get updated. You can see that it's a big row and you really don't want to have orphans or unneeded jobs lingering here. And just looking at this row, it looks kind of like array syntax gobbledygook. And uh, it's another good reason for the plugin WP Con Control, because as we'll see, it gives us a friendly user interface for working with this data. I think you'll get a better idea of what uh, WordPress cron jobs are and how they work if we go and look at some. So I have here a test site. It has the free Bloxy theme on it. Uh, if we go to plugins, you'll see that I have advanced custom fields here, which gives us this custom post type books and adds custom fields to it. We have all in one WP migration for backing up the site and freshing the site during testing cycles. I have the BBQ Firewall and Fluent Auth plugins here for some security. I have Security Ninja. It's installed and deactivated. And I did that for a reason, which we'll see in just a minute. And then the WP Control plugin itself. WP Control has several menu items. Help takes us back to the website. Then there are schedules and their events. So schedules are actually under settings, okay? And events are actually under tools. I don't know why the author split it up like that. Doesn't really matter because when we go into the admin menu, there are both options, both are there as tabs in the admin menu. So let's go and take a look here. 
schedules. What this is, these are the times when you can choose for WordPress cron event to kick off. Okay, and you'll see that WordPress itself has defined an hour, 12 hours, one day, and one week as times for cron events. And then a plugin has added a monthly cron event. Okay, and you can add your own, like let's say you needed something to run every other day, you know, then you could, you know, add it here. You would give it an internal name, double the daily number of seconds, and give it a display name and add it. Now, one thing to keep in mind when you add a cron schedule this way, it's dependent on the plugin, on this plugin. And so if you're developing your own plugin and you want to have cron schedules running, you can use this for testing to test out your cron events, but you'd want to move that into code in your plugin because if you disable or remove this plugin, then the schedule that you created with it will be removed also. Now we go over and look at cron events. These with the little WordPress icon there, these have been added by WordPress core. It has the action. Here is update user count, clean expired keys, you know, check the WordPress version for, you know, an update option, delete old expired privacy export files, scheduled delete, we have delete expired transients, delete auto drafts, and then we have all-in-one WordPress migration export cleanup. Okay, we have a fluent auth daily task. We have update check for plugins and themes. We have a health check, a delete temp updater, backups, an ACF health check. But then we have two jobs here that have no action. And these are from the Security Ninja plugin. I wanted to show you how sometimes you can get orphaned jobs. So I disabled that plugin, but the jobs are left in here. Okay, so what we can do if we look at the options here we have edit job, we have run the job now, which doesn't change the scheduled events if there are some. We have delete the job, but note that you can only delete cron events that have been added by a plugin or theme or that you add yourself. You can't delete WordPress core cron events. The plugin doesn't allow that. And then we have pause. Okay, so obviously with these uh, orphaned events, we want to delete them. There's no reason to keep them. So we can go down and delete them, and they're gone. Okay, so the pause this hook is a feature that the plugin developer has added. Because a lot of times, if you delete an event, like a core event, or um, even a plugin or theme event, it may get added back, like if the plugin gets, you know, reactivated or something. And so what pause this hook does is the job will still exist here in the list but the action won't trigger, it won't actually fire, so nothing will happen. That's a way if, for example, there was something here that you needed to put on hold, that's how you would do it. If we go and we look at one of these events by editing it, you see that we have the hook name, which uses the lowercase and underscores. You can add arguments to pass into the action if the action accepts arguments. 
Then you have the date and time, and you pick one of the defined schedules. Okay, so that's kind of looking at the list. There's one more thing that I wanted to show you, and that is that the plugin gives you an interface for adding cron events. You can have a standard cron event where you're calling a hook, and so you might define a hook like in your custom plugin or in functions PHP in your theme, and you would put that hook name there and any arguments and then the schedule that you want to have. So that's a standard. Now the plugin also adds an option for PHP cron event where you can put custom PHP code in and a URL cron event where you can hit a URL to have something happen. These are two types of special cron events that the plugin adds. If you're curious about these events and you're wondering about the security for those because they are allowing so the one is allowing you to enter your own PHP. It gives information about this and how you can lock these cron events so they can't be edited. Okay, so if, for example, hacker gets access to your WordPress dashboard, you can limit their ability to edit these cron events to run their own malware type things. So. These are some things that you may want to add. Now, we've all seen when we create a post how when you go to the publish option, you can actually schedule a post to be published in the future. So on this computer, it's 1118 right now. Let's change it to the post to be published at 11.22. Now we will schedule it. And now if we go back and look at our cron events, whoa, look, here's the scheduled post and this is the post ID. It's been passed in as a parameter. An example of WordPress using the WP cron feature. So that's the look at WP control plugin. It's a totally free plugin. There's no pro version upsell. It's a community plugin. It's not something you would need to use all the time and you might just install it and do your maintenance and then uninstall it, but it's useful for when you need it. So I hope you found this look at WP cron and at the plugin WP Cron Control useful and interesting. If you have, please give the video a like, a thumbs up, and please subscribe to the channel. It makes a big difference. Thank you for watching.